Welcome again. Uh, we are about to start and we are about to introduce a brand new product, Traffix Flow. Traffix Flow is an on demand traffic flow monitoring service. And it's Transoft's brand new um, software solution, bringing the right data for your multimodal traffic projects. So it provides diversity of data metrics that are easy uh, and ready to use in your traffic and speed studies. So first to begin with, I just wanted to have a, a quick word about Transoft for those of you who might not be familiar with. So we are operating in three different business units. And I just wanted to take the time to explain this in a little bit more details. So first business unit is civil and transportation. And civil and transportation is the one you are most likely more familiar with. This is the one which uh, is taking care of the auto turn product family as well. And traffic flow is also under this business unit. In the middle, we have the aviation business unit, which is a very focused uh, business unit. It, uh, it works very closely with the world's biggest airports. And it, uh, it offers dedicated solutions for the aviation industry. And then last but not least, we have a, a newly formed business unit focusing specifically on transportation safety. And I just wanted to put it out here because later in the presentation, I will, uh, I will mention this business unit because there is a bigger sibling of traffic flow, traffic safe, which uh, is, is handled and developed under this business unit. But first, uh, today, what we are here for is traffic flow. So I'm, I'm very excited to introduce you today, Traffic Flow, which is uh, our cutting edge video analytics tool for multimodal traffic flow metrics. The software uses computer vision to extract uh, essential information directly from the video file without any interim step necessary from the client. So the AI algorithm detects, tracks, and also analyzes road users visible on the video frame, and also compiles traffic flow metrics automatically available at your fingertips. And I wanted to obviously start my presentation what, what type of analytics outputs traffic flow uh, includes. So it includes traffic movement counts, most importantly, um, but also it includes road user classification, road user speeds and heat maps, and also a calculated annual average daily traffic figure. Uh, let's take a look at these one by one in a bit more detail. So the traffic movement counts provide vital insights for road planning uh, and designing through the following metrics. Counts, which can be classified either by mode, mode share, turning movements, or lane occupancy. Estimates of the annual average daily traffic based on the observed amount of, uh, of time. And also gap acceptance time and traffic density. The data is available through a secure online dashboard but also clients are able to download them as a CSV file just to perform further analysis and visualization if desired. Secondly, our automated road user classification performs at uh, the highest level of the industry. We're able to detect 15 different road user types. So what are these 15 types? Here you see a breakdown of them uh, between motorized and, not, and non motorized road users. So, if I start with motorized road users, then we're able to distinguish between different types of cars, whether it's a passenger car, it's a pickup truck, or it's a workman. Then we're also able to detect trains or light rails. 
buses and also two-wheeled motorized vehicles such as a motorcycle or maybe a moped. Um, and then finally in this list, there are trucks which can be single unit trucks or articulated trucks. Uh, and in the single unit trucks, we, have, we, we are able to distinguish between a heavy equipment, a farming equipment or a box truck. And then on the other side of, of the road user classification, and this is probably something more interesting for us here in Europe, is that we are able to distinguish between various non-motorized road users, or what we, always, uh, what we often call them vulnerable road users. And they could be bicycles uh, or cyclists, pedestrians, and scooters. And interestingly, we are also able to distinguish between push scooters, so manual scooters, and e-scooters. Uh, many of our clients are cities within, within Europe, bigger cities who are all facing the same challenge of, of uh, scooters and e-scooters getting more and more popular, and they, they are trying to figure out uh, what to do with them, how dangerous they are, uh, whether it's just a perception or not. Our studies are able to, to help them very much in this domain. Going further, road user speeds and heat maps. So they provide some further insights to your project site, uh, and they often serve as an important basis for any kind of decision-making process. So what we are able to deliver is the operating speed over time and by different modes of the road user. Uh, also speed by movement, including the median speed, the 15th or the 85, uh, sorry, the 15th and the 85th uh, percent of speeds, and also data on acceleration and deceleration. Here is an example of, uh, of a speed heat map from the camera view, which shows in which, which location of the junction uh, you have higher speeds predominantly. And where are the locations where you have lower speeds? And maybe this image can already tell you some, some locations or some conflict zones where you have big speed differences between high, higher speed and lower speed movements. And then finally, road user trajectories are also generated automatically. They provide a visual clue on how each road user are utilizing the infrastructure. So here's an example. This is the same, same study site, what I showed for the speed heat map before. This is from the word space now. So it's from an area of view. Uh, and the trajectories are color coded based on the road user type. So based on the mode. What you see here is that pedestrians are marked in the red. And, and you can clearly see where they interact, where they cross the road and where they position themselves. And this image already can be very insightful for certain decision-making processes. Let's take a look at how a, a typical traffic flow deployment works. So it works in four steps. The first step is to scope the project. So the client scopes the project by defining the camera location and the camera setup. Then Transoft works together typically with the client to collect and upload the video files. We don't collect the files ourselves, but we are able to link you with third party data collectors who can help you collecting these video files. Or if you do it on your own, we can support you advising uh, the suitable camera location, camera height, maybe recommending certain cameras. Once this is collected, Transoft automatically processes these video files in the cloud. And then finally, our results are published to a secure online safety dashboard. So in, client, in compliance uh, to the general data protection regulations, it is ensured that we are using a secure 
uh, password protected cloud environment, our clients need to log in by using their personal credentials to upload raw videos or access the analysis results. In general, these raw videos from our deployment are not making it possible to recognize any personal identifiable information, such as faces or number plates. But if desired, furthermore, Transoft offers some advanced methods to anonymize a raw video footage or processes, which means it's impossible to recognize any personal information. So this process and this service is compliant with the GDPR rules. Typically, what I can mention about a deployment is that once we receive a video, so that would be the, the third step, um, or at the end of the second and the beginning of the third step, we require around two weeks turnover time to, to calibrate process and publish the, uh, the results. This could also be lower uh, depending on our workload. So I would also like to briefly present two case studies today. Uh, the first one is a before after study from Lower Hutt City in New Zealand, where the city had this three leg junction with a slightly interesting geometry. In an effort to improve pedestrian safety here, the city changed the pedestrian crossing from only zebra stripes to painting them in a vibrant red color. This made the crosswalks more visible for oncoming vehicles, obviously. Um, but also the city performed the traffic flow study before and after the change in order to objectively measure how the zebra crossing, the newly visible, higher visibility zebra crossing, influenced the parameters, especially the vehicle speed. So the city was pleased with the results. This countermeasure reduced the vehicle speed for two of the three roads in the junction by 24 and 21%. Without such a study, without our analysis, this speed change would have been a lot more difficult to quantify. Our second case study is from Den Haag, the Netherlands, uh, which is the third biggest city in the Netherlands, where the city performed again a before and after study and they were focusing here specifically on, on cycling infrastructure design uh, the junction of the study site received some new dedicated cycling lanes addressing left turn movements so for this example i'm showing a different type of heat map a new heat map which we call a stream map this shows the volume of the uh, and the direction of the road user speed at the same time. So these heat maps have already been filtered out for the vulnerable road users, primarily in this example for cyclists. So what you see on the left-hand side is a stream heat map for the before scenario, which included a lot of left turn movements closer towards the center of the junction. And in the after scenario, on the right-hand side, uh, you see the scenario which includes now the dedicated cycling lanes which have been installed and now cyclists use these for left turns moving them further away from the center of the junction lowering their turning speed as well and making this uh, less dangerous for them or safer to them uh, to cross the road so all in all this this study confirmed uh, that the junction was made safer for cyclists. In the next coming slides, I would also like to briefly talk about the bigger sibling of traffic flow, which is traffic safe. So while traffic flow is on-demand traffic flow monitoring, traffic safe is on-demand road safety analytics. It's a solution for on-demand road safety analytics. In a tabular way, I would like to compare these two services or two softwares together. 
typical study length for traffic flow is around 10 to 30 hours. It can be a little bit less, it can be a lot, a lot longer, but this is the typical length. Uh, we support mostly single cameras, can be fixed cameras or drones as well. As I mentioned, we are able to detect up to 15 different road user types and provide traffic volume counts uh, per each of them. It includes also trajectories, putting some essential information on, on how the infrastructure is used, and also detailed speed data with speed distribution and heat maps. So on the other side, traffic safe is more or less able to deliver all the same, except the typical study length is a lot longer. It is often around 100 to 60 hours. So it, uh, it might be a full week. Uh, it might be work days, um, so five days a week study, which is a sufficient length to, to have any problematic road safety issues to be detected. It is able to support single or multiple cameras, could be fixed or could be drones as well. And regarding to capabilities of traffic volume counts, trajectories, and detailed speed data, it offers the same, plus it offers some extra. So the first extra is the road safety related event. Uh, it is able to measure and compare some of the near miss collisions. Most of the, of the near miss collisions happens uh, additional to, to any road safety parameter. So this is a way to objectively measure road safety on the site. Here are a couple of examples. This one is a motorist versus motorist conflict of a near miss between a left turn vehicle and a through vehicle, which luckily hasn't, hasn't yielded to, to a collision or a, or a crash, but this could have easily uh, happened. Secondly, this is a conflict between a motorized vehicle and a pedestrian where a work van is failing to, to yield and, and give way to the pedestrian on the zebra crossing. So again, with a, with a study, you can quantify how many times does it happen, how close are these interactions, and maybe if you do some changes to, to the junction or to the layout, you can also quantify how much did it help. Thirdly, and this is a closed, uh, this is a field test happening in a closed environment, so this is acted out. But this is a, a little video displaying a conflict between uh, a pedestrian and an e-scooter rider. Just to show you that uh, we are also able to detect these, kind of, these type of conflicts. And then last but not least, here we have a conflict between a cyclist and a motorist, where a cyclist is failing to, to judge the speed of the, of the oncoming motorist well, and it makes um, a risky left turn maneuver. So besides of all these road safety related events, which we are able to detect, and there could be hundreds or, or thousands for one single study, you're also able to detect over speeding information so how often road users are uh, speeding and using higher speed than the speed limit and this also comes with little 10 second video clips showing you the exact context of that speeding event and also you're able to offer a pre-filtered list of the countermeasures so this is not a recommendation uh, at all this is just a pre-filtered list a selected list what you might want to consider as a countermeasure, how you would like to go ahead and, and improve road safety at, at that particular junction or roundabout. With this, I'm saying a big thank you for you to, uh, to attend and to learn a little bit more about traffic flow and traffic safe. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, to send me an email at dah at transfersolutions.com. Many thanks for joining. Goodbye.